What's up, Michael? Oh, he's here. What's up? So, what are we? I don't have my camera on, but I'm streaming on my end. Are you on Although Cozy? Better than me. I only have like 50 people. You got like 150. So good for you. You on Cozy? Yeah, I'm on Cozy right now. How's it going, everybody? Over on Cozy. I think they're doing good. I think they're doing good. Don't. Can I just say one more thing? Don't worry, guys. If you go outside, you will. You'll be able to find a girlfriend. Maybe groom. You know, take a shower here and there. You'll be okay, guys. Uh, I, I groom. Okay, that's. Good. I don't want that taken out of context. I'm not saying but, uh, that's. A, I'm not saying it to fucking you. I'm yeah, saying it no. to your viewers. You know, well, no, I, I, I know there's probably a lot of angry I virgins over the there. Word. I didn't want to use the word uh, grooming and then people like make a sex joke out of it. But I was like, I was shaving this morning. I have like a big gash on my face now because I fucked up. So that's why I'm like, that's one of the reasons I didn't put the camera on. Um. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well. Yeah, shout out to your your fans watching right now over on, on Cozy. That's, that's cool. Um, yeah, basically I got really triggered like the the soy boy lib cuck that I am at um mm -hmm. your take on Twitter. Which one are we talking? The trans one or the uh, antidepressant one? Kind of both, but uh, you, you your antidepressant take was like top boomer shit. How so? I'm gonna just go find the tweet. Hold on. I was just, I can like link it to you right now. I was just reading them on stream. Uh, I feel like shit. Uh, check your DMs. Well, I got it up. Don't worry. I oh, already got it. All right. Yeah. Um. So it started with this. First, Biden says trans people made in the image of God. I said that's based. And you said that makes no sense. Changing your body and undergoing surgeries is saying God was wrong. And I said taking antidepressants means God was wrong when making your brain. And then you went on to say, you should create your own happiness and fulfillment and not rely on drugs. True. And then you said, I was depressed my whole life, but I've been feeling better because I found fulfillment in things. Some days are still rough, but I think it'll be okay because I believe in Jesus. Yeah. So, so true. So, okay. couple things right. is, one, just to be clear, when you say drugs, we're referring to like pharmaceutical medications here, right? We're not talking true, about like, shooting up heroin. But that's still a drug, though. Like coffee's a drug. This is the. It's all still drugs, and it's meant to make you feel good. I mean, wow, no, it's pro it's wild. This is already I'm... why it's. Uh, th hold on, all right, wait, all right, please. Let's go. So, no, this is why I wanted to talk to you about antidepressants in general. So, mm -hmm. when you say you should create your own happiness and fulfillment, that's the boomer take right there, and this is why. Obviously, right, you should take steps to make your life better. Obviously, mm -hmm. you should do what you can to create happiness in your life. I'm not denying that, okay? But when you say not rely on drugs, some people like me with major depressive disorder have literal issues with our brains. It can't just be like, you can't just like will yourself out of it. The neurotransmitters in your brains are not communicating properly and they're not creating enough dopamine or serotonin or whatnot. So you yeah. literally do need medis medication to help balance out your... your um, your brain. And then what you said a second ago, the, the drugs just make you feel good. That's also not true. The drugs help you feel back to being yourself. So antidepressants, for example, if you didn't have depression and you started taking antidepressants, you wouldn't have any like effects. It's not like a happy pill. I mean, I'm trying to, trying to like figure out like a way to articulate myself on this. It's just the way I look at it. It's just like, and it's an escapist thing. I mean, I've never taken antidepressants. I've never taken any sort of pill for, like, really anything uh, regarding, like, mental illness or whatever. But the way I look at it, I mean, instead of taking drugs to try to make yourself feel better or something, it's like you have to figure out, like, why you feel that way. So what if know? somebody thinks about it and they figure out that the reason they feel that way is because their brain uh, neurotransmitters are not communicating properly? I mean, I don't know what what that means exactly. So, like, like the, the thing is, is I think that you're having a misunderstanding. I mean, I know you said you were depressed your whole life, and I'm not mm – -hmm. obviously, I'm not here to fucking, like, doubt you on that. But there are, are different and varying levels of depression and also, like, different types. So, for example, I mean, I'm not trying to weaponize my own experience or whatever. Don't get me wrong. But my own experience with major depressive disorder is it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It literally doesn't matter where I am. I am depressed. I feel like shit no matter what. Even if I clean up my house and go outside and exercise every day and do everything I can to create my own happiness, my brain 
is broken, literally, without medication. Like, it doesn't function properly like a normal human brain should. And so when you say, well, it's an escape route, it's not an escape route. If anything, getting on medication when you have, like, clinical depression, it helps you face your issues more. Because depression is what distorts your reality more than anything. Getting on, like, pharmaceutical medication, it's not an escape route whatsoever. Now, I would I agree with you on that argument if you're talking about, like, marijuana or heroin or coke or whatever. Like, any kind of, like, illicit drug is much more of an escape, yes. But when we're but talking about— it's still, like, damaging your brain, though. No, it's not. It's not that. But that's a conversation for a second, a second conversation. Because your brain literally isn't producing the, enough serotonin to stabilize your mood. This is like, this is out of your control at that point. So that's major depressive disorder, which is where I think medication is like pretty much like the only answer there. Now, there is also depression that's more like circumstantial depression, right? So there are some people that are like, hey, uh, my spouse just died and now I'm really sad and I'm slipping into depression. You might be able to change your circumstances then to improve your mental health. I'm not saying that depression always means just start fucking popping pills, obviously. But mm. if you have like circumstantial depression or environmental depression, then your argument may have made a little more sense. But like if we're talking about people that like have depression to the point that they commit suicide, usually we're talking about people whose brain neurotransmitters aren't functioning properly. So I'm just wondering like what is the solution to that other than medication? It's just you have to figure out why you feel that way. I mean, it's I mean, I think it. I mean, it's really not that simple. I mean, it took me a while to realize that. But it's just, I think, coming to terms with like your existence and things like that and having to like reconcile with things, you know, I don't know how to like I don't know how to like really explain it. I mean, the, the main reason why I'm anti like drugs and all that. Is just because I just see like how they like change people's moods and shit, and how I I, I don't like how they like make me feel or whatever. Right. Uh, but... I haven't really taken any like like things like that, but I've like taken like think I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain it. No, I I, I I just don't like how it makes me feel. And uh, there's this great Sam Hyde video. Sam Hyde has some great life advice. I I linked it to you. It's like one minute long. It's where he talks about how it can like ruin your brain and how you should like just get like sunlight and you should yeah that's the that's the boomer take that's what i mean is well it works it's true true. well it's hold on it's true that going out in the sun and exercising is healthy and it also does better your mental health that's true but again you keep saying like you need to look at your issues you need to kind of figure out why you feel that way i agree with that also you do need to look inward and do self-reflection and figure out hey why do I feel so, so shitty? Is there something in my life that's causing this that I can change? I agree with all that. But what do you say to the people that's, that have done that? Or maybe they've literally met with a fucking psychologist and they're like, yeah, you have depression. You can't like will yourself out of this. Like this is, I mean, Wait, I feel like this is kind of like. Do you, what do you mean you can't will yourself out of depression? I mean, I mean, there's no such thing as like complete happiness in life. I mean, this might be depressing to say. But the, really, the most you can ever feel is, like, content with everything. You can never be, like, eternally happy or eternally free from, like, loneliness or whatever. I agree with that, but, but that's not what depression is. Well, no, I've had depression before. I know what it is. I know what it's like fucking not being, like, rotting in bed all day or whatever and wanting to, like, kill yourself or whatever. I mean, I mean, I don't know, Hunter. What type of emo albums did you listen to? <laughs> That's do, a good do, one. You listen, do you listen to a lot of, I have, I have like emo albums. I don't know if it's, it's like emo, but I have like but Smith's on. albums. On I, I listen to Radiohead. I, yeah. I agree. I appreciate the joke, but I want to actually, this is kind of a serious conversation to me because well, no, that's what I'm saying though. It's like, I would say like, go outside, stop listening to sad music. That, that was a good thing. Stop yeah. Listening but what to, like, happens when music. you do all those things and you still don't get better because you have a chemical imbalance in your brain? Like this, well, this I mean, kind of feels like if someone was like, my leg is broken and you're like, no, you don't need a cast. You know, you just got to go outside, take a walk, you know, stretch it every morning. Like it, you can do that. But at the end of the day, you still are going to need to seek medical attention. And also, just to be clear, I'm not saying this is for 100 percent of people with depression. 
Well, I mean, I feel like we're going back and forth because I feel like I'm talking about more like just like general depression, but you're talking about this uh, scientific type of depression. I, I feel like that's just that's like what an depression issue we're is. having. If you're well, no, 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 because I'm like talking about like people who like get depressed when something bad happens. I think you had like a term for it earlier. Oh, but you're invi- going back circumstantial to talking, depression. Yeah, I feel like I'm talking more like circumstantial for the most part. But you're going always going back to this one specific type of depression because that's the kind that requires medication. I so think they de- have like they'll, they'll fucking give you pills for anything, man. Depression is well, that's another conversation, and also that's not true. But depression is uh, it, it's not just like feeling sad, right? It's not. It's like, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I my experience with it is like. You do feel sad, but you also feel really angry and irritable and just mad at everything. And the world just looks darker. It's like hard to explain, but things just look darker. Um, You feel like you can't really connect with anybody. You feel like there's just no interest in doing the things that you're usually interested in. And this isn't just like a bout of of depression or a a bout of sadness where you're like, oh, I feel kind of bummed for a little while. Uh, Maybe if I go outside and run around. I felt like that. I felt like that before, but it's just... I don't know how to, like, really explain it. I feel like there's, like, always a time where it's, like, you can, like, get over it at some point. I don't think it requires, you know, taking medication and, like, messing with your brain chemicals or whatever. I don't know. Like, that shit just, like, freaks me the fuck out. Like, just, like, fucking with your head or whatever. Because I've I've taken, like, I forget what it's, I think, (laughs) I don't know if I should say say what I took. But, uh. It's totally up to you. You know, it, it just. I just don't like how that shit makes me feel. Like, I've taken, like, anti, like, anxiety stuff before. Uh-huh. And that shit just, I fucking hate the way it makes me feel. Well, that's, and that's fine. And again, I think the reason we're having a bit of a disconnect here is because I think we are actually talking about, like, two separate things. So, yeah, if you're really sad and not, like, mm-hmm. depressed, like, not, like, clinically depressed, but if you're, like, sad, then I would probably agree with you that, yeah, you probably shouldn't just start taking pills as soon as you can. And you should try other steps first. But the reason I keep bringing up the clinical depression is because I want to know what your solution to that is because there isn't a solution other than medication. And I'm not saying medication is the only thing. There are many things you should do. For example, you should take medication and exercise and go outside and get sunlight. That would be great for your mental health. But when you're clinically depressed, like you you can't just get over it. I don't think you understand what it's like to be clinically depressed or or – I don't think you understand how it works. Well, I'm reading it right now, like like what it is and what separates it. But it says characterized by persistently depressed moods or loss of interest in activities. Uh-huh. Uh, it's research suggests these factors may cause changes in brain function. Yeah, so that's actually really interesting too is depression fucks with your head. It does. It does. I was depressed for a while, but... I, I don't know. I feel like it's like a mix of I know I know this sounds like really like boomerish, but it is it is true, you know. Stop listening to sad music, go outside, eat better, uh pray, uh you know, well, try I totally to, like, disagree with you about the praying thing, but that might be a No, comment. praying praying works a lot actually. I, I think it works. I mean I just always feel better after I do it, so And that's that's fine, but like I just don't understand how you can be so against a medication that literally helps with a brain issue. Like, this isn't something you can just... I know I've already said this, like, five times, but, like, this isn't something you can just work out. Hmm. Let me see. I should have probably prepared for this. I literally woke up, like, 20 minutes ago. No, it's fine. I I did a little bit of research earlier on it, so... I I, I mean, maybe there's certain people that maybe they, like, it could be beneficial to them. But I don't know. The way I look at it, I just feel like, you know, you can, uh, you can like figure it out yourself on like why you feel like that. Or yeah, but what again? I'm saying, what happens when you look inward and you figure out that the problem is a brain imbalance? I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I don't know how much I buy into this idea that the only reason why you would ever be depressed is because there's like a brain imbalance. I feel not like there has always, to be other. Not- not every There's like time. other factors for it. Not every, not, I'm not saying that's the only reason why you're depressed. I'm talking again, I, to be specific here, I'm talking about clinical depression. And the reason I keep bringing that up is because I want to know what your solution is that doesn't, or the, your solution is that, what is your solution that somehow doesn't include medication? 
I agree, by the way, that what you're saying, don't listen mm -hmm. to sad music. Don't do things that's going to further exacerbate your depression. I agree with all that. Mm -hmm. Take steps to make your – eat healthier. Exercise. Go outside. I agree with all this shit. But the problem is, is that's not going to fix the underlying issue at the end of the day. It can help, but it's not really going to help. Or excuse me. Am I okay right now? It's going to help, but it's not actually going to like lead to like curing it essentially. Well, I don't think there is a like internal cure for sadness and depression and loneliness. I mean, there is no cure. But we're like, again, hold on. Stop. Wait, says, no, Michael, stop. No, man is, <laughs> man stop. is fundamentally You keep conflating alone. these things that are not the same. We're not talking about loneliness or being sad. I'm talking about something well, very... Well, no, that's connected to being depressed. No, I'm talking about something very specific here. Clinical depression, okay? Not, mm. not, not sadness, not loneliness, clinical depression. So it says, in some cases, the connections in our brains aren't strong, uh, aren't as strong as they should be, while sometimes the cells in our brain may have grown differently. In other cases, one or more of our neurons may send incorrect information through different areas of our brain. When our brain acts in such a way, we may experience the kind of biochemical trauma that can cause depression. Even if we haven't lived through any kind of emotional, physical, or spiritual trauma in our lives. When different parts of our brains aren't communicating, chemical messengers called neurotransmitters are often involved. This is because neurotransmitters help make sure the different parts of our brains work well together. So again, I, I guess like calling it a chemical I mean, imbalance isn't quite accurate. It's more of a, a issue with neurotransmitters. But my point being, this is something wrong with your brain, how your brain is currently functioning. Like how is, gonna, how is going outside in the sun going to help? Like how is it going to fix that? I mean, there. I guess there never is like a complete. What, I mean, I've said this. I kind of like said like there is no way to like feel internally like content with things like that. So you know, some people probably have it do have it harder than others in terms of like I guess mental illness. But I feel like it, I feel like you shouldn't just like rely on pills. Cause I feel like that's what happens. These people like rely on pills and like if like fucks with their brain too, because whenever you take a drug, there's always going to be a side effect for the most part. But do you agree that and, there would be a side effect of clinical depression? Uh, there could be. Sometimes it can make it worse, I would imagine. I like mean, that, yeah. Different it, that's, for different reason. that's true. Different medications can have different effects on certain people. Again, I'm not saying like if you feel sad, go to your doctor and get pills. I'm saying that if this is like a persistent issue and you've been diagnosed with clinical depression like I have been, mm -hmm. there, there needs to be something more. And again, I'm going to keep – like I'm trying to give you ground here. Like of course – exercising, going in the sun, eating healthy, that's going to help, but I want to actually like fix the underlying issue. And again, I'm not saying this means you have to be happy 100% of the time, but I'm there's a difference between, for example, facing something stressful and then flying into a fit of rage and thinking about how much you fucking hate existing and wish you could just fucking off yourself and oh my God, I'm so mad all the time, I hate life. Or- Yeah, that's how I feel all the time, but you know, it's like- but oh, here's another thing that can well, help hold on, you wait, out with there's that. There's that, or there is, hey, this is really disappointing. This is frustrating. Why is it frustrating? Let me think through it. Thinking rationally through it is important, but it's hard to do that when your brain isn't functioning correctly. Well, I mean, I'm trying to, because I think you've bought into this idea that like medication is like the way to like 100% or mostly like 100% fix the supposed underlying issue. But I don't think there is, like, a complete fix because I think life is just generally suffering. It doesn't have and, to be, though. That's the thing, too. Well, is... that, that's what it is, though. It's what it's always been. And I think relying on medication isn't healthy. Uh, there's, like, other side effects to it that can, like, fuck you up. You should watch the Sam Hyde video. I'm not watching like anything Sam Hyde related. I'm, I'm it's, good. It's but... a one minute long. He gives like the best life advice, like unironically. You... Okay, but you need to stop with this like no one's going to be 100% happy. I agree with you. Obviously, yeah. no one is 100% happy. Of course. Mm -hmm. But that's not what this medication does. <laughs> the medication you take, your pharmaceutical meds, your, your uh, depression meds or whatever, they don't make you like in a constant state of happiness. They just make your brain neurotransmitters function properly so you're actually able to rationally and realistically deal with negative emotions. Yeah, but there's, like, other side effects, too, and it, like, fucks with your head. So it's just, like... I mean, you I just know. read feel, to me about like, how depression feel... itself can change your brain chemistry. Like, yeah, it, it can, of course there are side effects, but usually the, the amount of side effects are very low. 
Uh, usually they only pop up for a short amount of time and then, you know, disappears. You continue the medication. And again, depression causes a fuck ton of problems. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're having like this disconnect here because I'm just trying to explain ways that people can make themselves feel better and having uh somebody like said it in the chat like the exact word i'm looking for like taking like responsibility for like why you feel a certain way and things like that and how you should just generally like try to avoid taking uh that medication because i think it's kind of like an escape route for the most part I mean, just, I know, I, I, know, I, can't, I, know I don't know how to argue completely... this anymore because we already went over this. You're saying the same things and you're just, you're wrong. Well, no, it's not I'm, an I'm, escape I'm, route. I'm, exp I'm explaining the disconnect we're having here because you're talking about this specific depression, uh, type of depression. Actual depression. Like, when I say depression, well, what do you mean? I'm, what do you mean actual depression? depression I'm talking just clinical like depression, shit. actually something you're diagnosed with, not just like, oh, I'm sad today. That's not depression. That's just being sad. No, that. No, no. What, what are you talking about? What are you talk? What are you? What are you? What are you talking about? The pre oh, Let me fucking read the the, pre the fucking. Uh, definition Did you not hear what I already said earlier? Though is that like even according to the the available research we have on this, if somebody doesn't have depression and then they take antidepressants, they're not gonna like get high off of it. It's not gonna like. Well, that's make not, them I'm not happy. arguing. I'm not arguing. You're gonna get high off of it, but I feel like you're. You're saying it's you're, an escape route. And it's not an escape route. It is route. kind of an escape route. You're escaping the fact I'm, like, trying to, like, not figure out, like, why you feel that way and coming to, like, a natural way of feeling better. Wait. <laughs> okay, we're, like, mad looping now. But again, mm -hmm. what happens when you look inward and you determine the reason you feel that way, or not you, but, like, you know, your therapist or whatever, yeah. determines that the reason you feel this way is because of an actual chemical issue in your brain? What is well, the not... answer to this? This is the equivalent of saying like, well, you know, you just you shouldn't get crutches, man, with your broken leg. Why? You got to just figure it out. You know, think about what's really causing it. It's like, uh, OK, I that, know that's it's a broken compare. bone. That's I not, need treatment. That's not comparable. That's not it. Absolutely comparable. is. See, the way the reason why this argument even got here was because you made this really weird uh, comparison that made no sense. And I just said afterwards, I didn't like antidepressants. That's not all you said, though. You made the boomer take. That you should create your own happiness and fulfillment. Yeah, so true, so true. And then saying you can just, like, pray the depression away. No, that's not what I said, but, like, there's ways to make yourself feel more content with your life. You know, there's no such thing as, like, I've already said this, like, happiness. You can, you can do things to make yourself feel better, but there's no way and to, like, internally feel happy. And one of your oh, – I forgot, I forgot what you said. You, you just made some argument I wanted to respond Taking to. Taking antidepressants mean God, means God was wrong? No, it wasn't that. It, it, it doesn't matter at this point. I I just I don't know how else to respond to this. I guess because we're just like saying the same thing at this point, and I don't understand well, why I, you're I'm not. Trying, I feel I'm like you're not understanding to... what I'm what I'm getting at here. Like no, no, I I do understand what you're getting at. But I feel like, I feel like it's the opposite. I feel like you don't understand what I'm getting at. No, I do. I totally do. You should take steps to better your life, and you should take steps to make sure that you're not exacerbating depression. If you are dealing and... with depression. You shouldn't listen to sad music. You should try to get get outside. I've even said this to people too. Force yourself mm. to get out of bed because if you're really depressed, there's a temptation to just lay in bed all day, but that'll actually make you feel worse. Force yourself to do shit. Try your hardest. But what I'm saying is when you have a chemical issue in your brain, all of that, it's good. It will help, but it's not enough. So that's what I'm getting at. When you actually have clinical depression – you have there's more necessary like let's try to let's take a step back from depression here like right. do you do you believe in any forms of mental illness oh no i believe mental illness is real i mean i'm mentally ill so like schizophrenia for example right like hearing voices in your head what would your solution be there would it be don't take meds do stuff to make your life better well, i think schizophrenia is like something different because i think with schizophrenia that those people are just like it's like forever fucked so i mean yeah maybe in that like case like pills could help them but i feel like when we're talking about depression people can just help themselves in that situation you know that's why i, I don't know how to like explain what i was trying but this to, is like the to, fundamental like, misunderstanding that we keep running into like why do you think celebrities who are super fucking rich and have literally everything they've ever wanted kill themselves 
Like they, they've can, done everything. You can never you can never be fully happy. Or maybe it I think I read something online that it's like maybe they feel that way because it's like they've achieved everything that's humanly possible and they just feel aimless at that point. Because, you sure. know, they're rich. That could absolutely they... be a reason. I'm not saying all of them actually – I'm not fucking armchair psychologist. I'm trying to be an armchair psychologist here. But there are there's a reason a lot of the times why people who have it all still kill themselves. Like there's got to be an answer there. Sometimes it is literally because of a chemical imbalance or a chemical disorder, I should say. I don't know, maybe because like I'm not like I don't like know anything about like science or anything like that. Well, here's a good study uh, for you. This is actually mm-hmm. this is supporting your claim, right? Mm-hmm. So it talks about how a, a vitamin D deficiency can uh, lead to depression. So yeah. <clears throat> when you say go outside and get some sunlight, again, like that's why I'm not I'm not arguing against that. You should. That is going to help. That's going to help you feel a little better. But sometimes, and in a lot of cases, especially if you're clinically depressed. It's not enough. I mean, I don't really know like what what we're trying to get at here. I feel like what I'm getting at is like first the reason I brought schizophrenia up a minute ago is because there are actual medications that can make schizophrenia uh, like not nearly as intrusive, and you can still go on to live a happy, healthy life even as a schizophrenic. There are probably people that you know who are schizophrenic. I know there are people that I, I mean, I was best friends with someone who. I think one of his sisters had schizophrenia or something like but with medication it can be managed and so when we're talking about stuff like depression well, i feel like schizophrenia and like depression like is not comparable i think you could compare maybe like ocd and depression because i think there's an overlap there but i, I, I mean i've had ocd could... too and that also is because of a, a change of the neurotransmitters yeah, but I, I don't know. I feel like there's like a like it's not comparable. You're comparing somebody who's like delusional and like it's like seeing things to like somebody and like that's something like I don't think you could ever fix. But then I'm talking about people who get into like fits of depression and feel sad and can't, you know, get out of bed and I think there's like ways that they can fix themselves without having uh to take uh, medication. One thing I didn't actually say that could help is meditation. I mean, I guess you could say praying is like meditation. But why couldn't you do this meditation. with medication? Like again, like the things that, that I think. I mean, I guess yeah, you could do that. But at the same time, I mean, like I'm coming at you from the angle that like medication, like doesn't make you can like fuck you up, like fuck up your brain, like make you feel weird and things like now that. Now we're looping again. I, yeah, but it's like I don't depression. Think it's, Literally, depression changes your chemical makeup in your brain. Like, you you read that to me. Low levels of neurotransmitters. Um, historically, researchers believe that low levels of neurotransmitters cause depression. Today, experts aren't entirely sure if depression lowers neurotransmitters itself or if low levels of neurotransmitters cause depression. What scientists do know, however, is that lower levels of neurotransmitters decrease the amount of nerve cell communication that occurs in the brain. When this happens, the brain may not receive the signals. It needs to know when to fight, flight, experience pleasure, sleep, eat, reduce pain, or ease anxiety. This disconnect can cause us to experience symptoms of depression like insomnia, decreased appetite, or irritability. So in a situation like that, like you can't meditate your way out of it. You can't pray yourself out of it. That's why I say it's the boomer well, thing. I never it's like, said oh, just that. go walk never... around the woods. Like That's not going to actually help. Well, I never said that was the internal way, but I'm saying like those are things that can greatly help you. I mean, like I, I've said, like I don't think there is like a permanent cure to these things. I just think there's ways you can make yourself feel better and feel more content, and try to find fulfillment in things. And so what happens always... when you when you do these things? Like again, I'm not. Okay, we're going. We're going. Okay. No, no, no. What happens when you do these things, but you aren't able to feel pleasure out of doing those things? Yeah, that's always a hard thing because, like, sometimes I, I've gotten like that, but it's just – I don't know. It's it's weird because, you know, there was times I've, like, considered, like, quitting doing what I do. You know, like, the Fuentes Iceberg video was, like, literally going to be my last video. Like I, like, I plan to just, like, quit after that video. But, you know, then it's, like, I found, like, a new, like, spark in it. Or sometimes you just got to find other things to, like – like hobbies or whatever to make yourself feel better. Yeah, but what? what hab- s- no, 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 stop. What happens when you do your hobbies, things that previously helped you feel better, that are all of a sudden just don't make you feel better? 
You're not able well, yeah, to that, feel pleasure happened, in anything but, you're doing. But it's it's like I I don't know. So I'm trying to find a way to explain this with my words. I'm not like the most like articulate person, as you can tell. No, I, that, and I know I'm kind of being. I I know I'm being a little aggressive here, but it's just when I see takes like this, I I like I said, you know, my soy latte and stuff, I get really triggered. Yeah. Well, let me uh, switch this up a bit. Let me ask you a question. But Do you, you take antidepressants? Mine. Yes. Are you happy? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm not 100% happy all the time. Like you said, no one yeah, ever is. Can. But I'm in control of my emotions much more than I was when I was depressed. Dude, I used to be a fucking anxious, OCD, depressed wreck. Like yeah, it, it was same. constantly a struggle for me to just do day-to-day -day life. I would wake up every morning just, oh, no, another fucking day. Existence was just a chore. Like I, Existence I, is a chore. Yeah, but it doesn't need to be fully a chore. There is, There are literally ways that you can help your life be more enjoyable. And if you're having a uh, reduction in neurotransmitters, then taking the medication to help that will help. This is like I, – I, it's just like common sense almost. Wait, Hunter, when did you stop being depressed? I I mean you're probably I'm probably going to be depressed forever but the medication makes it so, so that's true. like super manageable and I don't really feel depressed very often. Do you think starting a family helps you get over your depression? Uh I mean I was the most depressed I've ever been in the last couple months. Um and I'm just now getting better and recovering from it, but I mean I had a uh, family because, then. Oh, uh, it's because uh <laughs> there was this like James also video I remember watching a few years ago. And he was talking about how starting a family uh, can make you feel better, can make you like give your life meaning. Yeah, so but also depression, for example, can like yeah. cause you to be really irritable or whatever, which makes you like a shittier parent. So it, it's just like, I don't know, I I don't know where else to take the conversation. Like I, I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to like jump down your throat on everything, but it's like oh, this, no, this isn't like you're not making an argument. Like you are just fu like factually wrong here. I'm not saying you need to go take medication, but when you say yeah. you should just find fulfillment in life, lol, that's the problem. People with depression literally don't feel – can't feel fulfillment because I mean, of I the disconnect with their neurotransmitters. I was, I was depressed for years, and I, I've been feeling fulfillment. I mean sometimes I still – there's still bad days, and it's not like I'm saying like I've, I don't have like su – I don't have like suicidal thoughts anymore, but it's just like – I don't know. It's just like I found something that made me feel fulfillment in life. Yeah, and I yeah. I have too. But then guess what? Depression comes back. And yeah, then it does. you start I mean, to I... lose what was making you feel fulfilled before because you're not addressing the underlying issue, which is a decrease of nerve receptors or whatever with neurotransmitters. I'm trying to get this right, but, you know, there's like an actual problem with your brain. Like this isn't just like, oh, you know, I – I found some video games that made me really happy, so I'm chill now. Like, if 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 playing video games or whatever is like that's all it takes, then you probably didn't have like clinical depression, like what I'm talking about. Well, well, here's the thing. I mean, this is going back into escapism, right? Because a lot of people like try to distract themselves oh, man. with watching video exactly games. Right. I mean, I do it too. I mean, I mean, why do you think I watched I watched fucking like Lucky Star like three fucking times? It's a fucking, like, mindless, like, cutesy anime. Yeah, sure. It's just, like, a distraction thing, so that's true. I guess you can say, like, yeah, people, like, do, like, escapist things like that. Well, how do you know you're not doing escapist things? Like, praying? Or, like, just going for a walk? Is, I don't... Well, I mean, everything is technically escapism to a degree, but, you, you know, you got people that, like, they're always distracting themselves with like media and video games instead of you know going out into the world and also i mean walking does just make you feel better like being in the sun like getting what does the sun give you is the vitamin d i, I don't yeah. know what the fucking vitamin the sun gives it's you vitamin d you know, right? eat, you know eating better you know things like that you know i still eat like shit i've been trying to eat better all right but... i don't know what else to say because it's i I'm just going to be the same conversation over again because, like, you should, again, you can do I, these things, but then that's not going to fix the underlying issue. It can help, but it's not actually going to get to the root cause. To be well, honest, Michael, if you're saying, if, I mean, you're being pretty honest with me about having, like, you know, bad thoughts, like suicidal thoughts or whatever, like, mm. <clears throat> obviously, I'm not a fucking therapist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to tell you to go take meds, but, like, 
you might want to talk to someone about that. Like it, it's there's a lot that goes on with mental illness that like sometimes you don't even realize it until you see what life is like without it. I mean, I, I never liked the, the whole therapist thing. I never felt like I got anything from going to those things. Believe me, if you feel you can get something out of praying, you can get something out of therapy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll do it in the future. But you know, it costs money too, so that's like another. That's like another thing. So, <laughs> it's like maybe I'll be passing on that for right now. All right. Well, either way, I mean, it just it sounds like you're dealing with. To me, what you're describing sounds like you're actually dealing with depression. And well, yeah. I mean, I like like I I guess I am depressed, but it's like you know I feel content with things right now, so it's not that bad. You know, doesn't that, plus, doesn't plus it I was riding you, though, when like you know there's like. There's something out there that's like medically approved to help your your brain issue well, like to help said, you feel I, less I depressed. Don't, I don't like how those <clears throat> pills make me feel. Well, I don't know what you took, and I'm not about to ask. But like I said, there are different types of antidepressants. I mean, f- fuck, I'm not a fucking. I'm not about to diagnose you, or <laughs> I'm gonna diagnose you and prescribe you right here now. No, but I, I just think that there. I don't know. For me, that would be tough. For me, it would be tough to to know that there was a medication I could take that has been demonstrated to better your mental health, that can improve the, your perception of life and basically make you have the ability to just enjoy life again and just like not take it. I don't know. That To me, that sounds more depressing. But obviously, you know, that's that's just my personal experience at the end of the day. Well, I mean... I just try to have a healthy mindset when it comes to things. One thing I try to do is I try to, like, compare myself to, like, what I used to be. And, you know, I've been feeling a lot better recently. I think it's because I've been riding off of, like, I don't know, like, some sort of, like, high or whatever from, like, you know, doing all of this, like, internet stuff, you know, going, like, Florida for, like, AFPAC and whatever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's just... I don't know. I just feel proud of myself right now, so I think that's why I feel good. You know, I'll, I'll, I know I'll never feel like eternally happy. But that's not what it is. That's know. I don't. I think you're also misunderstanding that. Like, it, being better from depression doesn't mean you're eternally happy. It's not what that means. Well, yeah, but it's like I also don't like really feel depressed anymore. I mean, like, yeah. So some days, like, yeah, I still do feel like shit. But I mean, for the most part, I feel better, and I think it's because. You know, it's like springtime. You know, I'm going outside more. It's warmer. I'm getting vitamin D. Uh, I try to have a healthier mindset. And one thing that that's good, but I think this is gonna sound really, really uh, cringe. Well, before you say that, (laughs) let me just cut in real fast. Is another thing that happens a lot of the times when you are depressed is someone said this in chat, and I think it's a good point. Is you kind of delude yourself into believing that there's nothing else that's really gonna help. Like, no, yeah, that is true. Nothing's gonna help. This is how it is. I can't like. This is just how it is. And that's partially because if you're having like problems with brain, with uh, um, neurotransmitters in your brain, I'm reading right here, low levels of dopamine can literally make you feel like you have low self-esteem, low self-worth. Like you almost feel even subconsciously like I'm not worthy of feeling better. Like you, you start to kind of hate yourself and then feel like well, you, you know, deserve I know that. I know, I know 100% what you're talking about, but... Yeah, because, like, you do kind of get, like, deluded in it. But I think it's just, like, you just... It, I know this sounds cringe because people told me this for, like, a while. But it is, it is like, generally true. It's just you just got to find, like, a healthier mindset. And I can see why people, like, stayed depressed because it's, like... You know, I did, like, the fucking, like, wagey shit. That shit sucks. That, that's, like, such a depressing thing to do. Of fucking doing, like, wage work. And it's a, it's a, a depressing jo- job to, like, do. Oh, oh, oh yeah. But I feel like I feel like finding like I guess agency or like like finding your own way in life. You know, like yeah. finding like a I way mean, to be proud I, again, of yourself. It's, I, yeah, I just want to know what helped me a lot with depression. Please don't say and God. I, uh, no, that too. This is my audience. Oh, my voice. <laughs> that voice. I gotta drink water. Hold on. Sorry, I literally woke up like twenty like thirty minutes. It's ago. okay. I'm not fucking judging. <laughs> that was a bad voice, Craig. But one thing that made me uh, really help out with depression, and I know this is going to sound really cringe, but there's a reason why I love this thing so much. It was I, when I watched Evangelion, because that, or like other movies too, like Drive, like I don't know, maybe not Drive, but like Evangelion, because it kind of like touches upon 
like these like internal struggles like that people face yeah and yeah, there's this one <laughs> yeah my audience is already judging me but there's this one scene at the end where like shinji like sees his mom for the last time and she just asks him will you be okay and he says you know at the end i'll just internally realize you know i'll just keep rediscovering like who i am and like why i feel this way but it's like at the end it's like he like determines he will like find happiness because you know anywhere in life you can find happiness yeah so. and i think that that's a, a good thing but again we're gonna kind of just loop back to what i already said but yeah. um chad is asking how old you are someone said does anyone over 16 talk to hunter kind of creepy <laughs> yeah he, hunter avalon's grooming me right now hunter avalon grooms me it's becoming a it's okay i'm not gonna finish that joke but uh please don't uh, whatever the fuck you're gonna say sounds creepy i was gonna shit. say hunter hunter is the the alt-right pipeline it is true it is so real but uh i'm not no, i am you. yeah i know the all right pipeline is like not real. Actually, Noah Sampson agrees with me on this. Stuff. The all right pipeline is not a real thing. But I am eighteen. I turn nineteen in a week. Okay, cool. So, take that chatter. Ha! Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.